Good evening, everyone. This is Mary Ann with Songs of Inspiration. I'm just sharing some of the things I learned today at church and then some of my own experiences with some of the message in my own life. And um, just to share some things I learned and um, just thankful so much to be at a place where we learn about God's love and and experience God's love also see it on a daily basis not just by word but by action also and today he was talking about what a shepherd is not you know sometimes we expect our pastor shepherds ministers or whatever to be way up here and to give us all the answers we want all the time and just to tell us what to do every time like robots instead of allowing the Spirit of God to lead us and guide us into truth because that's what the Bible says and so what a shepherd is not is not to replace. He's not to replace the Holy Spirit. And um, sometimes, like I said, we try to put this um, big weight upon them, and um, many of them fall or give up because it's heavy to carry that because that's not even the part that they should be doing. So um, I'm reading from some notes that I wrote and. Um, it's not their job to go around and see what everybody's doing all the time. How in the world do we expect them to go around and tell everybody, don't do this, don't do that, or see what everybody's doing? They can even live their own lives, and they're not even capable of doing all that because that's not them. The Holy Spirit leads us and guides us into truth and convicts us when we need to do better. Amen? And so, they are the vehicle in which the Holy Spirit uses, but they are not the Holy Spirit. And sometimes people want to act like they're the Holy Spirit and get all up in your business and all in your face and, and try to put you down and stuff like that. But they're not the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit of God is a gentleman, you know. I think about things I've been through in my life and how the devil constantly boom, 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 boom forces you or just comes at you all the time. But the Holy Spirit is gentle, gentle, gentle. And it's that little nudge that makes you want to say, wow, okay. You know, it's not like beating you up against the head. But it's like that still small voice saying, come on, you can do better. You can come higher. You can overcome this. You know, it's a gentleness. And so there's a big difference from the devil saying, do it, do it, do it. Do it, do it, do it. You know, there's a big difference from that. And so, um, it's not our shepherd's job to tear down, but to encourage and share the truth, no matter how popular it is. Because when you're speaking the truth, a lot of times people don't want to hear it. But the Bible says that we need to know the truth. How are we going to be free if we don't know the truth? If we just know lies and things that make us comfortable, how will we know the truth? So we need to hear the truth. Amen. And so um, we must let the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us into truth. Condemnation comes from the devil. Um, you did wrong and he'll constantly tell you that. And a lot of people have no hope because he wants to bombard the mind because you know that the mind is the battlefield. He wants to bombard the mind with no hope and make you feel like you can never change or get better. Now that's from the devil if you ever feel that way. Um, yes, conviction is from God and, and conviction will say, yes, this is wrong, but you can overcome this. You can come up higher. You don't have to keep doing this, but it's not in a mean or condemning way. It's like a gentle way. You can overcome this. Greater is he that is in you. You can overcome this. You can do it. There's a big difference. And so if somebody's constantly making you feel worthless, like you never have no hope, like you can never overcome it, like you're stupid or dumb or something like that, and just like you made so many mistakes, you're worthless and all that, that's not God, that's the devil. But if somebody's saying, you can overcome this, you've been going through this for a while, now it's time to rise up and you can overcome this, and there's help for you. And I'm praying for you and and others can help you and there's classes or whatever when people will give you hope and ways to overcome stuff that's a difference you know so that's God now an example is like 
um, when I was smoking, the devil constantly told me, you're a bad example, you closet smoker, you're a hypocrite, you're not saved, and on and on and on. That still small, but that still small voice inside of me was saying, greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. You can overcome. I kept hearing hope, and I kept hearing love. And I kept hearing about a relationship with God, and that started to give me so much hope. And and the more I found out how much God loved me, the more I wanted to overcome. And the more you grow in a relationship with God, the more you want to do things that are positive, the more you don't want to do things that are negative. And in your heart, like Pastor told us, how do you know when you really receive Christ, you have a heart change? You might do some of the things that you used to do, but you don't want to anymore. And when I really got a heart change, I had still did some of the things I used to do. But inside of me, I was like, I don't want to keep doing this. You know, you don't want to keep doing it. And if you if you have that heart change and you keep on keeping on, you keep on growing with God, you keep on going to church and hearing the word, you keep on praying, you keep on reading your word, you keep on being around people that can encourage you, and you keep on listening to encouraging things, before you know it, with God's help, you can overcome. I struggled with smoking for over 20 years. And in my mind, I didn't think I could overcome. But God had so much positive stuff around me and so many different ways to help me. And it's just like, wow. I still sometimes sit there and cry because I remember when I was on my bed saying, God, I, don't, I just can't seem to overcome this. How am I going to overcome this? You know, I'm trying to praise you, you know, and with one hand and then with the other hand, I'm seeming to be living a, a double life. And in my heart, I wanted to change. And um, seeing my grandma and my mom pass away from it, you know, and at the time I still smoked because I was addicted to that darn nicotine, but with the help of God. And the help of the patch too, praise God, for whatever vehicles are able to help you, use them. And thank God for water too and mints, amen. But um, I still have family that's struggling with it and I don't condemn them. I just pray strength for them because I know how hard it was for me. But it is a very selfish habit that, um, that um, it doesn't really care about others around the the it's just such an addiction that it really is a really selfish addiction but just like like pastor said today any kind of addiction is bad whether it's overweight food addiction or you know shopping addiction any kind of addiction is bad but with god's help we can overcome all addictions but i was so thankful about that and um I thank God that uh, the hope, I'm so fortunate, you know, sometimes I could just cry, it's not sad, it's a thankful cry, because God loved me so much that he brings me around people to encourage me and share hope. And I believe that's one reason why God uses me to share hope is because he has given me so much hope in my life. And um, I don't want to hurt God or myself. Jesus paid such a serious price. He was beaten and bruised, ripped to shreds for our sins, for the things that we keep doing. And it's like, Jesus, I don't want to keep crucifying you over and over again. Help me overcome things in my life that are hurting you. You paid such an awesome price. And I thank you, Jesus. So you get help in whichever way you can. And um, I thank God for water. It really helps cleanse your mouth after you eat when you're overcoming. It takes a taste for those things out of your mouth. And um, the Holy Spirit constantly lets us know 
You can do it. 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 Amen. It's a. Uh, it's like our cheerleader. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, when we put people on a pedestal, that makes them fall. You know, when God lifts somebody up, then they don't fall. But when man lifts somebody up, they it's easily to fall. And um, so we have to pray for those that are in authority over us and pray for our ministers, pray for the leaders, for our shepherds. Because if a person thinks they can't fall, or if they're so puffed up and lifted up, then they think they can do anything. It doesn't pertain to them anything that's wrong. They think that it's okay because they're way up there. But anybody can fall if they're not dependent on God. And so we need to pray for them and love them and thank God for strength. We need to hold up their hands through prayer. Hallelujah. Because the devil is constantly trying to attack those that are in authority over us, those that are leaders, and we're supposed to pray for them anyway. Um, when people pray for people and um, when ministers pray for people, we're not supposed to say, that minister has power. We're supposed to say, God used that person. And we're thankful that when people say that our pastor prayed for them and they were healed, and he says, glory to God. I give all the, all the glory to God because if people don't acknowledge that God is the one that gives them strength before you know it, they fall down. So we must continually acknowledge God. And yes, we're to follow leaders after they follow after God. Because um, we know that Ephesians tells us that he gave the pastors and teachers and things to help us. And so we must remember that God is there for us. Hallelujah. Um, I thank God that our church is not for perfect people. I don't know anybody that's perfect. If you need healing, if you need restoration in your life, come and join us. Hallelujah. Like I said, I've known them as pastors for over 20 years, and they've been a blessing in my life. More than 20 years. They've been a blessing in my life and have done nothing but encouraged me to grow and have hope. And so all I can do is do the same thing that I've been taught. God bless. Have a great night in Jesus' name.